Hi guys, and welcome to this week's bonus video. Yes, that's right, a bonus video. I uploaded a video a couple of days ago. Uh, it was a little more cerebral, and I actually do have plans to do more videos like that, but I also recognize that at this point a lot of folks are just wanting a bit of Guild Wars 2 content to kind of scratch their itch between now and launch, so that's why I'm doing this. Today, we're talking about support. Someone had sent me a PM on YouTube suggesting that I do a guide to support in Guild Wars 2. And like all of the suggestions that I get, I did give it a certain amount of thought and I quickly realized that in terms of a proper guide, there's just too much information to cover right now. Not only are there different opportunities to take on a support role based on profession, it also varies based on the weapon, the different kinds of support, and also the content that a person is taking part in. Running a support build in World vs. World or Open World Dynamic Events for example, would be very different in terms of the kinds of things you're thinking about than running a support build in structured PvP or explorable mode dungeons. So today, instead of doing a specific guide how to uh, going over all the various specific options, I'm just going to do kind of an overview and point out some of the opportunities available to someone who might be interested in running a support build but hadn't really given it a whole lot of thought up until now. Now when we're talking about support builds, there's one general concept that has been around in MMORPGs for a long, long time that people, sometimes they're not familiar with it, sometimes they want to argue that it's not necessary. We are talking about the hybrid tax. That's the term used to describe what developers do by way of balance to allow hybrids to function without setting everyone up to feel like they have to use a hybrid build. For example, you can have a particular profession that is built to do a great deal of damage and the drawback to that is they aren't going to be able to do a whole lot of anything else. In order to do the most damage possible, they're going to have to sacrifice survivability, they're going to have to sacrifice the support options they can lend to other people around them. And if they want to start building up in their survivability or they want to offer more support options to the people around them, they do so at the expense of that damage. That's the hybrid taxes. You can do a little bit of everything, but you can't do everything well. In the context of Guild Wars 2, we know obviously there will be no tanks, there will be no healers, and what that means is that a support role in Guild Wars 2 will still have the opportunity to take part in the combat. And I think that's very important to understand is previous MMOs have trained us to sort of accept the idea that support means that all you do is stand around and buffing or you stand around healing or stand around debuffing. In Guild Wars 2 what I found is that it's very very possible and practical to place yourself in a support role and not feel like you're missing out on all of the fun and I think one of the things that's going to be the biggest hurdle is getting people to just try it. Just mess around with it for a little while and see if it's not something that you're willing to do on a more regular basis. Now my experience through two beta events and one stress test is that I did have support options available to my characters based on their profession, but I never really explored them. My warrior has never equipped a warhorn, much less used it, messed around with it, tried to see what I could do by way of supporting the people around me. I also never chose any support utility skills. All of my utility skills were actually sigils so that I could just equip them. I had the traits that gave me a precision bonus based on the number of unused sigils that I had equipped. And it was just a passive lazy way for me to just kind of run around and experience the game without having to get too involved in the mechanics of it because it's a beta and all of that could change. Same went for my Thief. I did have certain options that would allow me to support the people around me, but I chose to just mess around with the different offensive combinations that were available to me. With the Elementalist, that changed because in order to get a little bit of exposure to each of the Elemental Attunements, I pretty much had to take on the Water Attunement, which is described as being specifically for healing and support. One of the things that I noticed right away with that is that support in Guild Wars 2 is as much about the conditions and the boons as it is about healing. In that particular water attunement with the weapon set that I was using, I only had one group heal, or one heal that would allow me to heal other people, and it was on a 20 second cooldown. It was an AoE heal that didn't really heal for a whole lot. 
But when we start looking at the full scope of support and what I can do when, for example, I apply a chill effect to an enemy target, it means that that enemy target is doing considerably less damage because of the increase to cooldowns that comes with the chilled effect. So here I am basically taking on a combat role, but still being able to do a lot to either heal the people around me and or cut down on the damage that they're receiving. And all of a sudden it doesn't even feel like I'm playing a support role anymore, which like I say is great for people like me because I typically do not play that kind of role. If I hadn't picked up the Elementalist, the odds of me discovering just how fun it can be in Guild Wars 2 were pretty much slim to none until after launch when I had made it sort of towards the mid game, maybe towards the late game when I just wanted to do something different and decided to try out the Warhorn for shits and giggles. Another very important consideration that I actually came across my first time playing through the game leveling up armor smithing is that there's a, a tremendous focus in terms of gear on the gear that will allow me to do the most damage when there are also a lot of gear options available to people who choose support roles. There's even gear that you can make using totems. Totem is the, the kind of trophy that you use that explicitly gives you a bonus to healing. So you can make weapons and armor that all give you a bonus to healing. So for me as a player looking at what I was doing by way of healing with all damage focused gear, there's definitely room to take a look and see what kind of healing you can produce when you use that same ability while you're wearing all healing gear. Another thing to consider is that there are also stats that increase condition and boon duration. Now I I know they're definitely available through traits. I haven't explicitly seen any gear with those stats on it, but I haven't seen all of the gear that's available either. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. I noticed some comments on the forums from people who, you know, in the very low levels looking at abilities that give a boon for two seconds saying, why would I even want to waste the time on that? My guess would be it's probably worth a whole lot more when you've actually invested into increasing the duration of those kinds of boons so that they last a little bit longer and they provide an opportunity to be a little bit more useful. Another comment that came up in my last video actually because I was using elemental footage from the last stress test as kind of just b-roll footage while I was having the conversation I was having is that my elementalist was getting silver and bronze awards for the dynamic events that I was doing and I just want to point out a couple of things one it's definitely something to keep an eye on and if it happens to be a situation where people who are using a support build and focusing as much as they can on support in the open world dynamic group content that if they feel they're getting shafted on the rewards and that's definitely something to bring to arena net's attention I know uh, other games that have had the open world public group kind of thing that there were some questions that came up about how contribution was being calculated and ensuring that people were able to be rewarded appropriately when they were contributing without being rewarded inappropriately when they weren't. Basically, people gaming the system to get high recognition for contribution, getting more than the people who are actually running more of a support role and contributing in that way who are getting maybe a lesser reward. The other thing I just want to point out is that at least as far as that footage goes, a lot of those dynamic events, there, I remember one in particular, the footage that I was showing was from the Char area, and there were actually three different dynamic events going on simultaneously in that same area, and I was kind of running around between them all. So it wouldn't surprise me to have seen Silver and Bronze contribution, because I never really spent a whole lot of time on any one of the events by itself. It was run over here tap this mob, bring it on over to the rest of the people who are fighting, and then, you know, kill some of these guys for dynamic event two, and then go and revive some guy over here for dynamic event number three, and then by the time I was done, the first guy was dead, and I'm getting rewarded for that, so definitely worth keeping an eye on, and if there's feedback to be pushed arena nets way, then certainly we want to be doing that, but also at this point, I would say it's much too early to be using that as a justification to avoid taking on a support role. Like I say, my whole purpose in this video is actually to uh, just have an excuse to give you some more footage to watch, because I know that that's what a lot of people are wanting right now, but also to encourage people to give it a shot. There's not really any penalties or drawbacks unless the only way you can have fun in an MMO is to be doing as much damage as you possibly can. 
I kind of think that come launch, I'll be rolling an elementalist and focusing on support just for the sake of being able to see what it's like, not only in terms of the fun aspect, because I did find it fun, but also to get a feel for what I should be able to expect from other people around me, particularly moving into explorable mode dungeons, world versus world, and maybe some structured PvP, being able to have a realistic expectation of the people around me means that I'll be able to adapt to situations in those environments much better, regardless of which role that I take on. The nice thing about Guild Wars 2 is that it's not difficult to take on a support role and see what's possible for your profession. Even if you don't stick with it for a while, it gives you that familiarity. You can have an intelligent conversation with other people when you're coordinating and trying to come up with a group strategy for some of the more demanding content. And so that's it. I know compared to my other videos, this one was certainly not very in-depth. Um, but like I say, this was just kind of a bonus throw out there. Give you guys a little something extra to kind of cure the itch while we're waiting for launch, waiting for the next beta event. Um, I have other Guild Wars 2-centric videos in mind between now and the next stress test that I'll be putting out at least uh, one per week. We've got two weeks before the next stress test, so there should be two more coming out between now and then. And in the meantime, I will, uh, I will be keeping an eye on your comments and your feedback. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, go ahead and do that now. That's awesome. My subscribers are awesome. All of my subscri subscribers are awesome, and you definitely want to be one of them. So until the next video, you guys take care. Bye now.